So what was it that uh, drew everybody to the parts? I mean, Bob, talk about the casting a little bit and why each of these particular talents were uh, brought in and, and what you guys also saw in the roles that said, I want to be a part of this. <coughs> well, Chris Lloyd came in because of, uh, of uh, my co our co-producer, Neil Canton, had worked with Chris on uh, The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai. And, and, and he, kept, he kept saying, you guys got to meet Chris Lloyd. He'd be perfect for this. He'd be perfect for this. And uh, well, Chris, Chris you got to tell the story about how you almost didn't how you almost didn't oh. do this, how, how you almost didn't even read the script. Oh. Okay, I guess I got to tell the story. <laughs> uh, I, I, they, I was in Mexico somewhere doing a, another project, another film, and the script was sent to me. And at the same time, I've been offered to do a play um, in New Haven, Connecticut, with uh, a fabulous actress by the name of Colleen Dewhurst. And I was going to be playing Hans Christian Andersen. And I thought, this is where the, I really belong, is doing a play. Because is this the story that you Yeah, yeah. OK. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this, ver the, this version of it. <laughs> that the play is like, you know, I, I, I started out in the theater, and that's where I should be going back to, you know. And, and, uh, and you know, that's where a real actor belongs, is in the theater. And so the script that had come, this Back to the Future thing that had come into the, it's been sent down in the mail, I just sort of thought, I'm not even going to bother with this. It's time to go back and you know be serious about my career, and I just sort of dumped it in the waste paper basket. And somebody who was present said, "You know, Chris, you had a you had a uh, kind of rule of thumb that you never left any stone unturned; that you always checked everything out. You didn't, you know, because uh, in uh, acting, you, you have to be grateful for everything that comes along your way. You, go, you know, you never know when it's going to stop." So I reluctantly took it out of the waste paper basket. I read it and um, thought, well, OK. It's, <laughs> you know, it's a Spielberg production, and Bob is a Mechas, everything. So I went back, and I'm very grateful that I you know, changed my mind. Yeah. <laughs> Leah, how did you come into the show? I was doing a movie called The Wildlife with Eric Stoltz. <laughs> and they were looking at Eric Stoltz for the, the part of Marty. And they, I, this is what I heard. And it's, they, it's true. And they saw me in the cam because it was a universal movie. It was a terrible movie, really ghastly. <laughs> and, and, but they called me in, and I auditioned. And uh, it was uh, And she nailed it on the audition. Yeah. <laughs> she was great. You saw her, she said, that's Lorraine. So, I channeled the old Lorraine. I knew the, that was the part I think you guys liked the best. <laughs> yeah. And how horny I played her, too. <laughs> <laughs> but I got that old Lorraine really well. I just, I remember Spielberg was shooting the, the screen test, and they put a wig on me and a schmata on my head. And, you know, I don't know. I just got that old, you know. Now, she's like three years older than me. I'm calling her an old lady. <laughs> so bizarre. <laughs> but at the time, yeah. And Tom, how about you? How did you uh, get into Biff? Uh, I, at the time, I was doing, you know, guest star things on TV. As I joked, I was doing commercials and, and that kind of thing trying to get it into films. So my agent at the time uh, sort of begged and pleaded and promised, I think, the casting director at the time, you've got to see this guy. So I went into the first meeting, and the casting purpose person said, uh, well, you're supposed to be God's gift to acting. Let's see what you, you, know, what you could do with this. So not too much pressure. <laughs> so, so I read it, and, uh, and I guess that went well. And, but uh, often when you're, um, when you're auditioning for a film like this, they'll pair you up with people to see how you'll act. Well, Crispin and I got paired up from the very beginning. You know, we were the first two guys that got paired together as they kind of put this one with that one and everything. So Crispin and I went outside to prepare the scene, and I start this whole, you know, aim it fly thing, and Crispin goes into this character. What? Uh, I, I, you know. And, uh... And I immediately thought, if they don't hire this guy, they're <laughs> crazy, because that is the guy. I, tr really and truly, I was hoping that if I did well enough, I could be one of Bip Biff's gang members, 
you know, 3D or match or the, guy, the guys in the car. Because I didn't think, you know, I didn't think with, with the, the resume that I had at the time, uh, I would be Biff, but I thought, hey, I'm, you know, I'm hanging in there. I'll keep, I'll keep on trucking, and you know, we'll get one of these things. So, uh, so the last, the last audition was at this big boardroom at Amblin, and Bob was there, and, and Bob Zemeckis and Steven Spielberg, <laughs> all these people, and uh, and Crispin and I did the scene together. And Bob Zemeckis takes me aside, says, "Listen, I want you to really manhandle him. I want you to just let's really bully him in this scene, and you know, really let it out." So, man, I just let it out. And I was just throwing Crispin around the room and everything. I was, you know, dragging him across the table. At one point, I, I literally, I took all of his shirt and I lifted him up and I was pounding him against the ceiling of the room. Okay. But as I was pounding him against the ceiling, you know, it just, you know, my mind just blanked. I said, you are a very stupid man. You know? You've gone way too far, <laughs> and now you've blown it. So while I'm having that thought process, I lose the scene entirely. I don't know what I'm doing, and actually I have Crispin in the air thinking, I don't know what I do now. <laughs> so I just kind of put him down and stopped with that. <clears throat> that's, that's all I have. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Then, uh, and then Bob or whomever at the time said, Gre that's great, um, Tom, that's great. Hey, Tom, could you, uh, th thanks a lot for coming. Crispin, could you wait here? But Tom, thanks, thanks a lot. <laughs> and I walked out of the room and uh, we, uh, my wife, and I, my now wife and I, we had Bruce Springsteen concert tickets for that night. And uh, I remember the sports arena and the whole crowd like undulating and dancing and me, one guy way in the back just going, oh. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> and uh, I really thought I blew it. But then uh, the next morning they called and said, uh, said I got the thing. Wow. That's a good story. <laughs>